Today, I'd like to talk to you about the KPI visual inside of the Power BI desktop. The KPI visual inside of the Power BI desktop allows you to get a closer look at those key performance indicators, what KPI stands for. I was recently working with someone and in conversation with someone who's preparing for that PL300 exam, and it led us into a conversation talking about KPIs and the KPI visual inside of Power BI, and there were a lot of questions. And so I thought, why not make a video about it? So that's what I'm doing here now. So in today's video, what I wanna do is talk to you about the use of the KPI visual, the one built in, available in that visual gallery inside of Power BI, and what you need to uh, populate this visual with, what fields you need, what measures, columns, and things like that, so you can get to using it in your Power BI reports if you are just getting started using that KPI visual. What I'd like to do here now is share a, uh, a final report that I have showing a couple of KPI visuals here that I have populated with some sales data and some uh, dates for us so that we can analyze our sales by certain dates. Here we are looking at the, uh, the months as well as the years. <clears throat> so this is what we're gonna build out here. And uh, so let's go ahead and get started. On this second tab here, I'm gonna bounce over and we are gonna replicate what it is that we have, what we see here with these KPI visuals. It won't look just like this when you get started. And the first time you build out a KPI, it might be a little confusing. So hopefully I can clarify some of that today and help you better understand how you can use this in your reports. So when you are working with KPIs, the KPI visual that is. The KPI visual requires, and let's go ahead and add one in here to the report page. I'm gonna select that KPI visual. You can find it right there located next to the slicer visual in your visualizations pane. Now, when you're working with your KPI visual inside of Power BI, you're gonna notice that there are three fields you need to populate. The value field, the trend axis, and the target. The value is what it is that you are trying to measure. What are you trying to track? Is that sales? Is it profit? Is it events? Is it enrollments? New members? What is it that you are trying to track? And it will be shown as a number. For us, that's going to be sales. And we'll take a look at that here in just a moment. The trend axis is the period. This is going to require a date um, or a, a sequential field. We're gonna populate this with a date here in just a second and we'll take a look at a couple of variations of this just so we can get a better idea. The target is the target. What is, how do you know when you've reached your goal? What value indicates that you've reached that goal? What sales amount? What enrollment number? Uh, what total profit is it that you are seeking for that given period? That's what you're gonna populate this target field with here now. So. Let's go ahead and for this first example, let's take a look at creating this KPI here with total sales and our annual sales goal by calendar year. So I've got a couple of measures that I've already created just to make things a bit simpler for us here. One of the things that we want is we want to include the total sales. So total sales here, as you can see, just contains the sum of the internet sales, sales amount column. So I'm gonna drop that into the value here now. So I'll drop that into the value and you'll notice that nothing happens at first. That's because you need these other fields populated. In fact, if I even go in and grab the target, which for this KPI, we're gonna use the annual sales goal. Now you can use, if you have some other field already existing within your data, you can of course use that field, but if you don't, you can go in and create a measure that is just giving you that exact amount. So I've set here, based on our sales and the data that we're working with, I've set an annual sales goal for us of 1 million. And so we can track and see if we are hitting that for these given regions for these years. Now you'll notice again, we still don't see anything because we need to populate that trend axis. And this is where we're gonna grab that calendar year and drag and drop that in. All right, so let's take a look. Here in the KPI that we've created on this total sales KPI showing us our progress towards that annual sales goal, we can see the following. We see this value here. 
We see the goal as indicated, which is 1 million. We know that is the annual sales goal because that is what we've created in the measure. And then we see this percent here. So that's letting us know that not only have we reached that sales goal, but we've reached it by a significant amount. Now, before we get too far into this, I wanna explain this because this isn't quite showing exactly what you think it is showing here for us. Now, I've got a couple slicers here on the page to help us uh, make this a bit simpler, make this a bit easier to understand. So right now you can see the value we're seeing here also matches up with this area chart that I have here, this total sales by calendar year area chart. Now, that is what is shown once you populate your KPI with all of the required fields, like the, the, the target value, like the, the total sales value, like the annual sales goal, and your calendar year, that trend axis. You can see that that area chart in the background provides a little bit more context, helps you see and understand the tracking there. Now, the value here, this is just giving us the total sales because we're pulling in that total sales measure. So we are seeing here the total sales for the last year. Now, how would I know that if I didn't have this visual right in front of me to help me with that, to help me understand that? Well, there's another thing that you can do. You can go into your format pane here. Then you can go into these different fields and you can modify these. So here we can go in and select display date. Now you're gonna see that for the date, which is the trend axis, and we've populated that with calendar year, we can see that we're seeing the total sales for the year 2008. So that's what we're seeing there but we're seeing it for all countries. So if we really wanted this to help us, we were trying to track for each country. This goal here is the goal for each country. So I'm gonna select Australia here and see how Australia did. And you can see we are getting, it's always gonna give you that last date value. So we're getting the last year of available data for all years that we have. Now, of course, you could go and you could apply a filter. You can do other things to this to uh, manipulate it to show what you wanted. But if we take a look at this here, we can see we are getting that exact value here or that value in millions for the year 2008. And we can see by how much we surpassed this goal, which is great. Now we can click through the different countries here and I can see for Canada, Canada didn't do so well in 2008. They were short of the goal by about 32.64%. We can take a look at France, again, short of the goal, not as bad, but still a little short. We can see Germany met the goal, the UK met the goal, and so did the US. Now, what happens if I wanted to go in and filter this by a given year, if I select 2005? You will get that value there, but then you do lose that area chart there. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, what about if we wanted to see this differently? What if we wanted to analyze this by months? What would that look like here? So I'm gonna add in another KPI visual here now. And for this one here, again, let's also bring in that total sales measure into the value. Into the target, I'm gonna bring in that monthly sales goal. And then I'm gonna also bring in the English month name to the trend axis. Again, notice the area chart is exactly showing what we see here in the area chart visual above. Now, what we see here, the US, the goal, the uh, monthly sales goal that I've, I've found here for us is just got de derived by taking that, that monthly sales goal and dividing by 12, and that's the value that we get here. So we can see the US is hitting that goal and you can see by how much here. Now, some other things that you can do here with your KPIs Let's go ahead and let's go back into the formatting here. And let's also for this uh, monthly KPI, let's toggle on the date. And now notice that it is only bringing in December. So again, bringing in the last month. Now, of course, if we wanted to see this month to month, if we wanted to see those differences, one, you can use your area chart here as a slicer, but we could also go in, we could duplicate this year slicer and remove the year field and populate it with the English month name, and then we could then see that. Again, it's always gonna show you the last month for 
a year when you have the total years. Now, what if you do not have the full months like what if you for example 2008 we know for that adventure works data we don't have the monthly sales all the way through uh december in fact it stops in july so you are gonna fall short there for that now a couple of other things to note about your kpis in regards to your formatting and what you can do if i select this kpi visual here and we go into these different fields of course, you can go in and, and modify the size of the callout value if you wanted here, just like a card or any of your other visuals. The icons referring to the icon you see there. How big do you want that displayed? So we can see if we're meeting those goals there or not. Do we want that check mark nice and big as it's displayed? Now, the trend axis here. This is what we see in regards to the color and the formatting towards the goal. Are we meeting the goal? And so as we go into format this here, we'll go back and take a look at uh, one of those countries that didn't hit the goal. We can see the value here and you can see the icon change. So we can see those side by side now as well. But when we are looking at the trend axis, you can see those colors here, the good, neutral, and bad color. And we can go in here and change the direction and say high is good. And that's why we're seeing here that the value being short of the goal is showing us that bad color. But if we change the direction here and say low is good, then we're gonna see that switch up there. So then we see the difference here. And so if we went into another uh, country here that did meet the goal, what we had set, then you can see how. So depending upon what you're measuring, if exceeding your goal or this target value is good, then you would wanna go in and say, okay, high is good. If it's bad, then you can say low is good and have that variation there. So depending upon if you're tracking towards, working towards and progressing, growing towards that goal, or if surpassing it is bad, then you would wanna change that direction. You can also go in and modify the target label. What do you want this to be displayed as? Do you want it to be displayed as goals? Goal, do you want it to be displayed as something else like sales goal? Do you wanna go in and modify that there? Do you want the color? And then distance to goal, do you want the style to be play, displayed as a percent? Do you want it to be displayed as a value? Do you want both? I think both can be a, a little confusing. I think it's best to have just one or the other. Percent is a great one. And then the distance direction is increasing, is increasing, is it positive or is decreasing, is positive. So which do you want to have selected there? All right, everyone, that's it for this demonstration. Just a quick little video to uh, help those of you just getting started using Power BI or the KPI visual for the first time, getting a little bit better of an understanding of how to use it, what is needed to populate that visual so that you can use it uh, correctly in your Power BI reports and how it works, and hopefully understanding some of the formatting options in the KPI visual and Power BI a bit better. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope if you haven't already, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button below so you can stay up to date with all of the videos that not just I post every month, but my fellow trainers here at Pragmatic Works. Thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you next time.